Welcome to the Advanced Cardiac Life Support Chapter on the Adult Cardiac Arrest Algorithm. In the previous section, we discussed VF and pulseless VT and set up a relevant scenario. If you don't remember the given scenario, please review the previous section so that you are familiar with the situation and are ready to see how to continue attending to the patient and properly follow the cardiac arrest algorithm. Before we resume the scenario, we want to remind you of some important information as you study the cardiac arrest algorithm. Ensure high quality CPR with compressions of at least two inches and at least 100 compressions per minute. Allow for a complete chest recoil. Minimize interruptions in CPR and avoid overventilation. Keep in mind that there are two routes of drug administration which are effective and will not interfere with high quality CPR and defibrillation. These routes are intravenous or IV, intraosseous or IO axis. The IV route is the most approved route when it comes to administering fluids and medications in patients. With the IO route, medications are injected directly into the bone marrow. IO access can be used in patients of all ages, but it is preferred in pediatric patients or when IV placement may be unsuccessful or time-consuming, thereby delaying critical medication. The IO route can be accessed in 30 to 60 seconds and can be used with any medication that is used in the IV route. Another thing to consider with the cardiac arrest algorithm is the energy for defibrillation. Biphasic energy is more effective during defibrillation and manufacturer recommended dose is usually 120 to 200 joules. Monophasic energy is typically 360 joules. One last thing to keep in mind are the reversible causes or the H's and T's which include the following. Hypothermia, hypovolemia, hypo or hyperkalemia, hypoxia, hydrogen ion or acidosis, cardiac tamponoid, toxin, pulmonary thrombosis, tension, pneumothorax, and coronary thrombosis. Now, let's continue with our previous scenario. Continue providing CPR to the patient at a rate of 120 compressions per minute and allow the patient's chest to recoil. Follow the cycle of 30 compressions to two breaths on the patient for two minutes, starting with chest compressions and get IV or IO access. Pause to check the heart rhythm for 10 seconds. If the rhythm is unshockable, do a three-point pulse check of the carotid, radial, and femoral pulse points. And if there is a pulse, then continue to post-cardiac arrest care. If the rhythm is shockable, give one shock of 120 to 200 joules and resume CPR for two minutes. During CPR, administer the following vasopressors. One milligram of epinephrine via IV or IO access and repeat every three to five minutes. As an alternative, you can give 40 units of vasopressin via IV or IO access to substitute for the first and second dose of epinephrine. Pause to check the patient's heart rhythm for 10 seconds. If the rhythm is shockable, give one shock of 120 to 200 joules and resume CPR for two minutes. Then administer the following antirhythmic drugs after the first or second dose of epinephrine. For VF or pulseless VT patients, administer an initial dose of 300 milligrams of amiodarone via IV or IO bolus. Then if there's no response to the first dose, add another 150 milligrams via IV or IO once more. If amiodarone is not available, then administer lidocaine in a dose of 1 to 1.5 milligrams via IV or IO for the first dose, then a second dose of 0.5 to 0.75 milligrams via IO or IV at 5 to 10 minute intervals, up to a maximum dose of 3 milligrams. For the abnormal heart rhythm known as recurrent torsatus depointus, administer magnesium sulfate in a loading dose of 1 to 2 grams via IO or IV axis, diluted in 10 milliliters of dextrose, 5% in water, or D5W, given as IV IO bolus, over 5 to 20 minutes. Consider if an advanced airway is needed. 
Once an advanced airway is placed, breaths can be administered continuously. For the full cardiac arrest algorithm, take a look at the chart included in this section. Finally, let's look at the treatment of ventricular fibrillation and ventricular tachycardia in patients with hypothermia. Hypothermia is an abnormally low body temperature of less than 35 degrees Celsius or 95 degrees Fahrenheit. For patients with VF or VT who have hypothermia, one defibrillation is sufficient. However, if the first shock is not enough, then additional attempts should be made by following the BLS protocol and also by warming the patient at the same time. For those in cardiac arrest with moderate hypothermia, observe the following steps. Do CPR, perform defibrillation, give medications and continue warming the patient to raise their core temperature above 35 degrees Celsius, which is equivalent to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Administering drugs is usually not advised in a patient with hypothermia as they may increase toxin levels because of a decreased metabolism. The best practice is to focus on raising the patient's core temperature. Administrations of antiarrhythmic drugs are not effective in hypothermic patients. However, the administration of vasopressors as per guidelines of ACLS can be effective while rewarming the patient. During proper resuscitation, the patient may have a return of spontaneous circulation, or ROSC, which would prompt post-cardiac arrest care necessary for the survival of the patient. We will discuss post-cardiac arrest care in the next section. This was the chapter on the adult cardiac arrest algorithm. Please proceed to the next section of this course to learn more.